set up or we might be live right now and everyone's already watching us so <laughs> you guys are picking your nose stop that, stop that immediately <laughs> there's live on facebook on my side <laughs> we have uh <laughs> minutes here before 12 p.m eastern so we will let folks join meanwhile Tell me where you guys are tuning in from. KS, where are you? I'm in Seattle. Seattle, is there anyone? I, I think we have quite a bit of people in the group actually there in Seattle as well. Yeah. Is anyone else in the state of Washington? Anyone, anyone? Give us comments if you're watching. Uh, how about Jeremy, where are you? Hey, I'm in uh, Southern California, near, kind of near LA. Well, Southern you. California. So, state of Washington and California. Bet you there's a bunch of those folks in here, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have Tracy here, also from California, a little town there I can't pronounce, Yukia, Yukia. Yukia. Yeah, and uh, if you are watching live, actually, let us know where you are. So I'm just an hour uh, outside of Toronto, Ontario. Let's see how many countries we have <clears throat> tuning in. I see about 40, 40 folks now coming in live. And it is 12 o'clock. Okay, so we're gonna start this off. Welcome, this is our second Facebook Live um, in here in the Facebook group. And we're doing these every day this week uh, to chat with coaches and trainers like yourself and uh, discuss some of the topics that pop up these days. Uh, so today I'm talking to Jeremy Kinnick and um, KS Shabbat. And so I'll maybe start by asking these two to introduce themselves. So Jeremy, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and who you are? And who, who's Jeremy Kinnick? <laughs> All right, um, let's see if I can do this. Uh, I am uh, a, I'm an online coach, I, but I'm mostly uh, a stay-at-home dad. I homeschool my two boys, uh, my wife works, and so my online business is directly um, or my business is directly online because of the the constraints i have with my time um, and so i work with uh, clients on nutrition as well as programming i've got a background in in uh cross training for a bunch of years and so but now i do stuff at home great awesome and jeremy i think you have a little bit of crossfit background is that right <laughs> yeah yeah a little bit <laughs> Like, uh, I started in 2007, so I was, I've been doing it since then. So, so you did CrossFit, you did CrossFit before CrossFit was cool. <clears throat> yes, I did. <laughs> many, many, many years ago. Jeremy is uh, being modest. He's also been in CrossFit games as an individual a number of times. Uh, what, what years did you compete, Jeremy? Uh, 2008, 2009. Uh, 2011, 2012 as an individual, and then with our, our team from, from my brother's gym uh, in 2015. So, wow. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So, meanwhile, we have uh, here, Leslie is tuning in from Walla Walla in Washington, and Tiffany from Grand Rapids. Uh, I've actually been to Grand Rapids. I taught a bunch of trainers there, and we have Marta from Montreal. Uh, so, KS, what about you? What do you do? I am a personal trainer here in uh, Seattle, Washington. I've been uh, in the business about four and a half years now. I came out of uh, the tech world as a pre-sales engineer there, sold uh, storage and server systems to large companies and got tired of cubicle life. Um, fitness has always been kind of in the background of my life, and so I, I pivoted uh, about four and a half or so years ago uh, into, into personal training. And so uh, right now my business is mostly in person in the gym. Uh, I'm an independent contractor at a small facility here where uh, you know, I train all my clients. Um, 
So most of my business is in person. I have transitioned some of my uh, clients into more of the hybrid model where, uh, you know, we have uh, some in-person session and some online. So I'm kind of in the middle of both worlds, but still in person and partially online. Awesome. Thank you. So tell me this, you two, how is your work and life have been impacted in the last couple of weeks? Like what are things like right now, Jeremy? Well, I, I would definitely say that um, I, I recently did a challenge to get some new clients and there was a lot more hesitation from uh, people that were interested, uh, they just, it just seemed like people were a little bit timid um, hmm. and, and I didn't feel comfortable kind of pushing that. And so I yeah. think that there's a little bit of that going on right now. Um, and as, but as far as my, my current clients, I think that just being available to, to listen to them and, and what their concerns are as they're maybe making some adjustments. Um, I think that's a, that's, a, a good way for us as a coach or as coaches to, you know, um, just help them feel more comfortable because it is important to, to take care of ourselves. And, and as, and if that's our business, we want to make sure that people are still taking the time to take care of themselves and put that time in, even though there's a lot of changes going on in their lives. Um, and so as far as the, my current clients, not really haven't seen a lot of, um, I would say negative impacts. It's kind of just been a little, people are just a little bit unsure of what to do. It's kind of been my experience. So it's a bit of a shift. And I encourage for those of you tuning in, I see folks here now from Dubai and Maryland, mm -hmm. uh, I see Virginia here, uh, I saw Barrie, Ontario, and London, UK. As you're listening in, we have two perspectives here that I think would be very valuable in terms of providing contrast because so Jeremy works mostly online so you may hear things like shift in what he might talk to his clients about uh, what he's supporting uh, his clients with i'm seeing that with my private clients as well where topics have shifted all of a sudden we're no longer talking about meal prep we might be talking about stress management more and then you have um ks and i'll ask him to speak to that a little bit uh, in a second where KS is primarily a personal trainer working with people in person. Uh, so the shift is probably much more uh, severe or noticeable for him. KS, would you say that's true? Like what, what, how are things, what are things like? Absolutely. Well, things here in Seattle are changing almost by the half an hour. Um, I got a, phone, a, a text message last night from the facility owner where I contract at and the facility has been closed to the public um, as of today as of this recording the facility is still available for one-on-one -on -one training um, and it's uncertain as to how long that may last so um, you know i'm fortunately I, I i do have the infrastructure to support people remotely when and if it comes to it but um, you know, as far as the in-person is concerned, that is, that's uncertain at this, at this time. So, Kies, it sounds like they, your bread and butter are those in-person sessions. Like, that's the, the bulk of your time and bulk of your clients. But you're also saying you have a couple of clients that are online. And given the situation right now, you are going to be leaning into that kind of way of coaching clients a bit more heavily or maybe a lot more heavily right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing, the thing that I'm aware of is that because here in Seattle, all of the large gyms are, are now closed. Um, like I said, the facility where I'm at is fairly small. So we've been able to fly under the radar. Um, but like I said, that facility is closing to the public. So what I have to be aware of is now uh, for even my remote clients, how can I assist them in, in moving towards home workouts? Um, you know, moving away from the from having to rely on either my gym or another larger gym to to you know to do their workout. So it's like you said, it's more a changing conversation that even around the workout. It's okay now we need to switch towards more calisthenic workouts, or if you have any home equipment, exercise bands, kettlebells, or whatever, we need to utilize those to keep you going as opposed to the 
the more barbell, dumbbell, you know, machine-based type workouts that may be typical for me. Yeah, and I think that's actually a great point. And I think that will be relevant for uh, a lot of coaches and trainers that maybe provide programming remotely because uh, we're normally not used to being constrained by equipment, if you will, right? Like you might give uh, a program to your remote client and then your remote client will go into their local gym and they will have barbells and kettlebells and dumbbells and whatever else, where even with that, you're like, okay, but you're at home now, right? Uh, So what do you have in your basement? (laughs) Yeah. 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 Yeah, thank you. So let's let's chat about that a little bit. So the the whole online training thing. What are the tools? Like, what are the tools that you use on a daily basis that allow you to do that? Whether that's apps, software, a calendar you have stuck to your fridge. Uh, we've chatted a bit yesterday about maybe using snail mail for people who are a bit more technically challenged and would like a way uh, to still be touched if that makes sense i uh, actually had a writing coach a couple of years ago and she sent me handwritten cards every single week and it was a highlight of my week and we could absolutely meet on skype or facetime but i would get these like little envelopes and she would put stickers on them and there would be a tea bag and it was just the best thing ever right so it's snail mail is not something we think of when we think of online coaching or remote coaching so i want to hear like what are some of the apps tools software platforms that you use for your online clients ks what about you you know i i kind of thought about the question when you reached out to me yesterday kate and i thought about kind of the the process that i would walk a client through from inquiry through uh all the way through you know monitoring and you know, I kind of have, I wrote some things down. Um, and Jeremy, maybe you and I can bounce some ideas off of each other, but, you know, starting at the inquiry, like for me, the the place that I have someone start at the initial inquiry, I have a website where I have uh, Google Forms hosted. Um, and like that kind of begins the process. So for me, it's, it's a website. I use Facebook a lot. So uh, I can either post a a, a link to a Google to a Google form on Facebook directly and inside of an ad or inside of a post or whatever, or I you know also have the website that has links to the same Google form. So one of those two one of those two resources leads to a Google form kind of to start the inquiry process with me. So and uh, let's see if folks maybe have questions for you as you speak, right? Because I think this will be very interesting for many uh, people here that are trying to make the pivot similar to you and kind of leaning more into the online training. So you have a website, which is the initial point of contact uh, for most people. How do people usually find your website, would you say? I do a lot of a lot of Facebook um, uh, posting my, my network on Facebook is almost 3,000 people so you know I try to you know provide value through through Facebook and um, you know a lot of inquiries are, are, are come through that and it sounds like you use your Facebook personal profile to post content tips anything mm-hmm. like that so and then you engage with people who engage with your content Absolutely. And I also have a Facebook group that I, that I started a few years ago and there's nearly a thousand in there. So I also provide value inside of my personal Facebook group as well. Who are the people in the Facebook group? Are they your clients or are there whoever wants to follow along? They are. Interestingly, so when I first started the uh, L1, I, uh, I, I, I put together kind of a five day clean eating challenge. And uh, I invited personally about 40 people into the challenge, thinking it was just going to be a few friends and family. And the thing mushroomed out of control. <laughs> Those 40 people started an invite frenzy, and it just grew and grew. I, I put 40 people in there. From 40 people, it's gone to almost 1,000. So, uh, so it sounds like it's, a, it's an online community you've maintained, right, over the years that we, we talked about relationships with Brad yesterday, and he spoke uh, quite a bit about using those connections as well. So the website uh, and the Facebook you use to post content and then interact with people through like Facebook Messenger. Uh, Jeremy, what about you? How do people find you initially? What are the tools involved there? 
Uh, for me, it's, it's real simple. I, I have a website, but I don't use it much. Uh, I, I, I probably need to do a little bit more work on there. But for me, it is uh, my Facebook um, personal page as well as my Instagram. Um, I do a lot of just posting on there, um, just daily life stuff as well as nutrition stuff. And I'll post that I'm searching for or looking for, for a certain niche um, and looking for new clients. And so for me, that is my marketing, um, just done right there on my, on my personal pages. I try to keep it real simple. I've done Google forms, um, and I still kind of use them here and there, but, but for the most part, it is just people reach out to me. Um, they show interest and, uh, they'll leave a comment and, you know, tell me more or something like that. And then I just reach out to them and, and we'll just start the conversation. So it's very, very simple. So far, that initial contact that we've talked about, all the tools that I've heard uh, you two use are free. Like, so we have yeah. Facebook, Facebook Messenger, uh, maybe email, uh, set up a website. And I mean, that obviously could be either free or really not free, depending yeah. how, okay. uh, how far into it you want to go. If you were putting something together really quickly, though, um, it sounds like it could be free up to this point, right? Everything we've talked about. Uh, and there are some amazing tools for putting together websites that are beautiful on the fly right now. That has come a long way since the first time I was putting together a website. Or like yeah. Ugly WordPress <laughs> templates. Like now they actually look pretty and beautiful and professionally made. If you were starting right now, do you think you would have a website or would you not bother with a website? Like this very second if time is of the essence i keep it simple i wouldn't i wouldn't fiddle with the website you know my website for me has been you know i came out of the tech world so i'm, I'm somewhat of a nerd and i like doing you know website i i, I maintain my, i put my i develop my own website and i maintain it but like that's my personal nerd interest coming out <laughs> it's not it's not required in fact my website kind of like jeremy my website for me has been more like an online business card more so than a marketing tool yeah. So you know, I have it. Yeah, I'm really hearing your website is like your garage, like you go there to tinker. <laughs> just a little hobby, right? You just enjoy it. Yeah. It's not necessary. It's not yeah. necessary. So then what? Like w there is an initial inquiry. Folks find you uh, on Facebook or Instagram or whatever personal connection they make. Um, Jeremy, what do you use to actually coach clients? So for me, I use, um, for my nutrition to deliver that, I use pro coach. Uh, and, uh, so that handles all my delivery. I mean, if, if you're familiar with it, um, it, it just takes care of all that. And so I'll do check-ins with my clients, uh, through that. Um, and then for my workouts, I use trainerize, um, for my clients, uh, I'm, I'm, st I'm kind of working on it because I come from a background in CrossFit. And so uh, to deliver those types of workouts, um, I'm, I'm working on how I can best do that. Um, and so it's been a little bit tricky for me. I was, I have used uh, Google forms or Google docs, uh, not Google forms, Google docs and, and just send out spreadsheets. Uh, but the tracking and keeping, you know, keeping up to date on that is a little bit more of a challenge. Um, but that's a super easy way to start it. Uh, but I've found, um, as I'm getting more clients, um, and I'm programming for them that trainerizes a lot easier to deliver and there's some cool kind of bells and whistles in there where um they'll auto send like a text like checking up on oh or congratulating my clients as i as i work with them so or as i hit new personal records so it's kind of a cool thing uh, but i use that's for me that's those are the two things that i use um, so are, you provide to your clients nutrition coaching and yes. you use pro coach yes. and you uh, provide workouts so like programming uh, and that that's trainerized. Do you split those offerings? Do you do nutrition coaching only clients and workouts only clients? So it's all a com combination. I, uh, I started when I started, I was doing separate, doing it separate. And now I'm kind of getting to a point where I'm doing them together. And I mean, rarely or occasionally I'll, I'll allow people to, you know, if I know that they're going to like a CrossFit gym, I'm not going to program for them because they are already getting that and they're paying a lot of money for that. Um, and so there are circumstances where I will do that, where I'll just deliver the nutrition, but for the most part, it's both.
So, cause that, that will, for me as, as a coach that will maximize kind of the, the amount of money I, I make from that specific client. And so I don't have to have, instead of having 20 clients where they're doing one or the other, I can have 10 who are doing both. And so that makes it easier for me uh, to deliver, you know, the, the quality coaching. So you found Jeremy over time that you, you were separating the offerings at first, mm-hmm. but as you go forward more and more, you finding like it, it, it almost sounds like it's easier to manage when it's just like you have this track, like you do health coaching and health yeah. coaching entails yeah. nutrition coaching and workouts. And that's what you provide. Okay. How is that different from what you do? Like what do you use and what kind of coaching do you offer? Yeah. I'm in the same boat that Jeremy is. I do, I do combine coaching, combine uh, fitness and nutrition. You know, I, I've done the level one, level two with you, Kate. And uh, uh, for me, I still consider myself a personal trainer. Right? That's where my heart is. Uh, and so for me, the nutrition is an ancillary service to personal training. It's not, uh, it's not something that I do as a standalone service. So for me, I use, like Jeremy, I use Trainerize. And Trainerize has some nutrition integrations in, in, built into it as well as uh, my fitness pal. And so I can do... Um, you know, all my nutrition coaching basically using those two tools. Well, so, uh, and we actually just had a question, I think, from Marta. Uh, what kind of platform do you use to deliver your services as a personal trainer, which you just answered? So uh, I'm hearing like three things came up. We have Pro Coach, Trainerize, and uh, you've also mentioned my fitness pal, right, as maybe uh, a potential assistant tool there so if you are strictly a personal trainer doing workouts only especially making the shift from doing in-personal sessions if you hear crying this is so uh ontario announced that all the daycares are closing as of today so we'll be talking about the realities of parenthood (laughs) and uh working from home later this week so you may hear my one and a half year old there (laughs) <laughs> my husband is kind enough to, to take fun. care of right now it's yes <laughs> there go. this is real right like let real life as it happens and, and these two are both uh nodding yes you have four kids i have four kids and three grandkids wow that's awesome yeah and jeremy you said you are a stay-at-home dad so you know all about this although they're probably not crying like this already yeah. but we we just got a new puppy so you might hear barking We'll see. <laughs> uh, cool. So, uh, yeah, so if you're a personal trainer, kind of like shifting gears a little bit, providing workouts only, uh, trainer eyes might be a good option. If you're looking for a way to add nutrition coaching to your services, or if nutrition coaching is going to be your main offering, that's where Pro Coach can come in uh, and kind of help you provide that. So, uh, what other tools? Go ahead. Before you, before you move off on that, okay, just just you know, just to keep things simple for people that are that are just purely doing personal training, Trainerize is also not one of those things. It's, it's not required. Uh, I started off using Google Docs, just like yeah. you're using Google and I'm sending sending spreadsheets to Google Docs, and it works perfect. It's free. I mean, these are all you know. There's a bunch of free tools that you can use to run your business. You know, if you're looking for ways to get up and running especially now, like I need to get up and running now, you know, Google Docs is a wealth of resource and it's all free. So. And uh, uh, also I think uh, Jeremy mentioned that you were using like spreadsheets at first, right? Like it's uh, KS, yes. you said, you know, if you were starting tomorrow, you probably wouldn't bother with a website, for example, right? It's just kind of time better spent connecting and reaching out and making those uh, like, increase in engaging with potential clients rather than maybe fiddling with menus and all that. And then Jeremy said that as he was starting out, did I get that right? That you were using Google docs or spreadsheets. What did you use with the first couple of clients? Uh, it was uh, Google docs, Google yeah. docs. And you provided uh, workouts in those just, work, just workouts there. You know, it was like, here's your week of workouts. And then they would just input and super simple. But, uh, you know, and it, and you can just do it right now, like immediately. It's not, there's no setup. There's nothing. You don't have to, you just get the link and send it to your client or share it with your client. Kind of thing. So Jeremy, there is a question for you from Thomas. He uh, uh, wondering, do your clients have a problem or difficulty 
using two different platforms? Because you do use two tools for two things, right? Yes, I do. And that is more of a recent thing for me. Trainerize is something that I've recently started using. Uh, and I would say there with some, maybe some of my older clients um, who aren't as tech savvy, there were just so, there were some misunderstandings, and I think it was on on my side of not explaining, just expecting them to know. And so, as I've gotten better at setting the expectations, and this is what you're going, we're going to do. This is the these are the two apps that we're going to do or use. Um, I'm not having any more issues. So, but I was initially. So, with the new clients that you're taking on now, you're kind of saying that these are the tool you two tools that I'm using. Yes. And it doesn't really sound like there's any confusion no. now with yeah. older folks that were expecting one thing and then all of a sudden there was a change mm. yes. uh, right. where the confusion was coming from. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, what else do you use in terms of uh, additional like software? Like, what, do you, what do you use to invoice people? I, personally, I use PayPal for everything. And KS, do you send individual invoices or are they recurring invoices? What do you do in PayPal? I have, I, I use both. So for my, you know, folks that have gone hybrid or for folks that are purely online, I have a subscription payment model that I use. And then for in person, I send an invoice when sessions are, are, are duly renewed. So if I uh, wanted just to have one, a one-off personal session with you, you would just invoice me as that individual session in PayPal. And if I signed up for a package, then you would set up a recurring yeah. PayPal like subscription. I think it allows you yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. Do you sell to your in-person uh, clients when it's a package? So you bill them every month for a certain number of months? Continuously, I, I feel, or does it I, end? I go four weeks at a time, so I don't put people on long-term contracts. Fortunately for myself, you know, my clients have been around for uh, most, my average client has been with me over a year. So, um, and that's just been on a month-to-month -month basis for me. Um, I, when, when they've consumed their, their, their sessions, um, I send them an invoice for a new, for a new round of sessions and they pay it and show up the next training session. So, it's been pretty easy, pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy, what about you? How, how do you invoice clients? Uh, I, when, I, when I first started, I was using, uh, actually keeping it real simple, using Venmo. Mm -hmm. um, and then I transferred to, and every once in a while I will use that, um, but mostly I do uh, PayPal. Um, I'll set um, invo I send invoices, and I've started dabbling a little bit with Stripe. I've just heard some things about it, and so I'm kind of checking it out. Not sure what I think about it just yet, but but PayPal's, uh, you know, like Kay has said, PayPal's really easy. Just send the invoice. Uh, for me, it's uh, my clients will sign up for uh, typically will sign up for you know uh, six to twelve months, uh, and so I just they just get a monthly invoice from me, and so uh, I want to set up the subscriptions, but I just haven't done it yet. Um, so they just get the invoice and they pay it, and I just. So I keep, I keep, it's real simple to do, mm -hmm. to use. I like PayPal. I use uh, PayPal as well for my clients. I find it also quite easy, but I, I do know that talking about the various options, there is a coffee shop in town. I was just talking about it uh, earlier today who made a shift very quickly because they were forced to close their doors this week, but they actually started delivering coffee and smoothies to clients' doors in town. I okay. uh, and they ask to send them a direct transfer through online banking, right? Because we are, we're in the same local town. We use the same local bank. Uh, so it's, a, it's an easy transaction. So in that case, it's, it's yet another option that you could use really quickly. Uh, there is a, a question from Jill. Uh, so she says, I'm already using ProCoach for nutrition coaching. Do you recommend adding on ProCoach workouts or getting trainerized for starting online PT? Uh, I can probably answer this one. So uh, th those are gonna be two options for you. So you could definitely do both. ProCoach will offer workouts, um, different workout tracks, and also variations uh, for folks with injuries, working at home, et cetera. In my perspective, trainerized 
will be a good option if you are a personal trainer, uh, especially and if you're used to programming your own workouts. Uh, it just might provide a more flexible solution for that. Uh, so if you're uh, leaning more towards nutrition coaching being your main thing and you want to provide clients with workouts also, uh, ProCoach might be an option. If you want a, a bit more flexibility when it comes to workouts, Trainerize would be a good option. Uh, what about you two? Do you, would you agree? Like, how would you answer, Jill? I, um, I use ProCoach uh, workouts for some of my clients. Uh, but like you said, the ones that I need to be more flexible with were, or they're expecting like a CrossFit workout from me, um, that's not available with ProCoach. So I'll use uh, Trainerize for those. But I mean, having the, but like that, I think Thomas asked a question about, um, is it hard with the two different apps? If I can keep someone on pro coach and I give them both, it's, it's just easier. And so I'll do that. But, but like you said, if it's, if it's something I need to be a little bit more creative with or have flexibility, I go with trainer eyes. Sounds good. Yeah. And I think it, it really, it's kind of the same rule applies for, how advanced do you want to get with any one tool? So if you are a beginner cook, you can probably get away with one knife or two knives. But if you are really starting to get your rock on in the kitchen, you eventually gonna have a knife for everything. There might be a bread knife and a paring knife, paring knife. Um, and there's my my English as a second language coming out. Jeremy is laughing because he caught it. Uh, yeah, so I think it just kind of really depends on how advanced you want to go and how much flexibility do you want and how many tools do you want to use. So, so if we're talking about starting up tomorrow, um, how many tools do you want to juggle? I, I think, okay, I just, just to piggyback, I think it's something, you know, there's also the, the, uh, it's kind of the, the expertise and experience factor that comes into the to that question as well. Um, you know, if you're not a personal trainer and you're not uh, familiar with exercise programming, Trainerize is not the tool because that's you know those are skills that you need to be able. You know, Trainerize is a tool; it's not a replacement for that knowledge. So that's a great example. That's actually a great point. So I I'm not a personal trainer. I'm not a strength coach. I don't do workout programming. Uh, so if I, uh, if I do nutrition coaching using pro coach, uh, I am familiar with pro coach workouts as an advanced exerciser. Uh, so I'm able to provide support to clients that may have questions about the workouts, but I also know that they're well designed and pro programmed by someone else. And I don't have to do that because that's not my uh, wheelhouse. Uh, any other tools that you use additionally to what we've already talked about? So I'm thinking uh, Zoom to maybe video conference with clients or WhatsApp, uh, anything to get in touch or maybe schedule clients appointments. Yeah. So talking about scheduling, I use Calendly. Uh, it's another free resource that um, you know, I can send somebody a link for a coaching call or for, uh, you know, for uh, uh, whatever. You know, I can send them a link. Um, my schedule with, with uh, Calendly, it, it integrates with Gmail. So um, I, when I send the link, my calendar from Gmail is already in, you know, in, the, in the link. So when a client goes to, to the Calendly link, they can schedule themselves in an open slot. And I don't have to worry about, you know, sending four emails. Oh, I'm available at 12. Oh, well, I've got an appointment at 12. How about two? And yeah, I'll back and forth, right? So it makes scheduling very easy. If you use if you use Gmail for the Gmail calendar, Jeremy, what about you? What do you use, if anything, to schedule clients' appointments? Uh, I don't necessarily do. I've done a few Zoom calls um, with clients, but for the most part, either I'll get on the phone or or I'll it'll be via text. Um, very. I, I've I've used Calendly for a little bit, um, and I just stopped doing it. Um, and so I just I don't have enough clients to where that makes a bit, that makes a difference for me. Um, because it is not my, you know, my soul, like I'm, I'm also doing other things. So for my nutrition and, and programming clients, I don't have that many where I need to have it as, as organized as I think KS, I think he has, he takes a lot more clients, a lot more going on. Um, I don't, 
I think I may eventually need to use that, but for now it's a lot of, it's just, I just get on my phone and text or email, um, real simple stuff. Yeah, I can. Uh, so I've actually been in both boats there and I definitely mirror what you two said, because when I coached two to 300 clients at a time, um, for in precision nutrition coaching, I used acuity, which is similar to Calendly. It's an amazing coaching scheduling appointment tools where clients can book themselves into your calendar. Um, but now that I do private coaching and I never really coach more than five to seven clients at a time, I don't need that. So my scheduling is super sophisticated and it's like, when can you make it next week? Right. So that, that's how we connect and that works. So once again, it's in terms of how simple it is and um, how many clients are you juggling at any one time. I also use WhatsApp uh, to just check in with clients throughout the week. Uh, I can send them a picture of me being out and about and they do the same and kind of do a little hello to each other through pictures. I uh, had a colleague who sent me a message yesterday with a with a hug so that was that was good that was very appreciated and um, so whatsapp um texting and uh calendly for scheduling acuity for scheduling or something really low tech uh so this might be question uh for ks uh chris is asking what about online small group training or personal training via zoom is this something you've considered, Chaos? Just given the shifts. As soon as we hang up this this chat, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'll be working on. <laughs> there you go. My goodness, you see, this is the give and receive. So you guys got something. Yeah. Uh, what do you like? Do you think that would be an option for you, Chaos? What's that? Do you think that would be an option for you, like in terms in terms of training clients, like right now? Would you, would you train it's me? Not, it's not an option. It's a requirement. Like I said, I'm seriously like that's that is when we hang up. That's what I'll be working on because, like I said, the gym where I contract is closed. So um, you know, in person, I, I started out. I started off uh, as a personal trainer doing boot camp, and so I've got a bunch of gear that you know, just small portable gear here at the, at the house and. There's some parks here locally that are being closed to public access and some have it. So like even just, you know, in the short term, I could probably do some some park workouts. But even that's being, you know, up in the air right now as for how long that's going to go. So for me, it's going to be an online group X something that. Have you done those already? Like, have you have you done any so far? You have not. So like, how would you go about it? Do you think like we're in zoom right now, there is you personal yeah. trainer and you have two people attending mm -hmm. your online workout. Like what would you need to do right now? As far as what I'm thinking, like you would probably like instruct me to move my camera uh -huh. further away. Right. And we would all like get up and uh maybe go through some jumping jacks what do you think like if there are other personal trainers thinking of offering this on zoom are there any tips that you're thinking of already like so what i just shared what i'm thinking of direct yeah. everyone to position their camera in a way that you can see their full body for example yeah for, for me i'm not sure uh you, because i have you know my clients are used to one-on-one -on -one interaction you know, I may resort to something even a little bit simpler than that, which would be just like one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls as mm -hmm. opposed to the group Zoom call. Um, and that way, you know, I can still maintain the one-on-one -on -one interaction that my yeah. client like from me and expect from me. And so, you know, it'll be a virtual one-on-one -on -one session basically where I'm here, you're there. I'm, you know, providing you with the cueing, providing you with the exercise order, you know, watching for your form reminding you to keep your chest up when you're doing a hinge and like all those type of things that I normally would do in person transitioning that to, you know, to, the, to the virtual world. Jeremy, what about you? Like you, you do train a couple of people, I you know, at home. So if you had to train these people through Zoom, any specific well, things you need to, to do? I, I did a, an Instagram live this morning as I was uh, training, I think it was four people in my garage gym. And I thought it was a really cool, just kind of way for people to just tune in and they can join in. 
Um, I, I'm going to start doing that regularly. I think I'll use, um, instead of Zoom, I think I'll probably just do an Instagram uh, live or, or possibly a Facebook live um, and, and just have them participate as if they're with me kind of thing. Um, yeah. and, and, I, and I will, because I have the equipment in my garage, doesn't mean everyone has the equipment in their garage or at their apartment or wherever they're at. And so I plan to have different modifications. If I'm using a barbell, maybe they have dumbbells or maybe they have a backpack or maybe they have, you know, and so there's things that we can find out, Hey, what kind of equipment do you have? Let's, let's take advantage of that or let's adjust the movements. Um, and just be a little bit flexible with, with my clients, um, so that they can, because I do, even though I do remotely coach, like you said before, if they're not able to go to the gym, now they're at home. So now what? Now they don't have all that equipment. So, so being proactive in thinking what, what would someone have at their house if they don't ever, if they've never worked out at home. And Jeremy, I'm even thinking like, it's interesting as you speak, like if, especially if you're working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, so like KS could really provide very personal uh, service here because um, what you could do, you could actually ask your client for like a little tour of their home, right? Like show me what you have, because like I could show you, like I may have, uh, like there is a bench, Yes, exactly. Um, maybe we could use that bench for something, right? Like what kind of chairs do you have? Like I, none of my chairs have a back. They're all bar stools. Here, I'll show you guys my little bar stools. They're all like this, right? So if you're giving me an exercise that relies on a chair having a back, that won't be an option for me because I don't have any chairs like that. So maybe you could actually have your clients walk you through their house with a little like phone. Uh, so okay. you could then have a sense. It's like, okay, so there's that coffee table. We're going to use it for that. We can use that bench for tricep dips. Uh, here's a little space you can clear off for push ups. So I'm actually kind of excited by this. I have never had, uh, a lead workout like where somebody walked me ks would you be up for like guiding me through workouts sometime this week because i'm sure my gym's closing sure. we could practice you could practice on me i could be <laughs> your, your <laughs> game. it's it's totally cool that way you don't have to take it out on your clients All right. <laughs> <laughs> he did not know that i was gonna ask him that <laughs> Oh my goodness, what did I just walk into? Uh, so there is um, a question from Quentin. Um, to keep it simple, Google Forms or Docs, personal Facebook page, and PayPal. Does that sound like a kind of a strong trio that you could start with tomorrow to you two? Absolutely, absolutely. I'd be a lot of nodding. Like that would be like the, the simple, simple, bare bones, free, I think. PayPal yeah. is, I think, is going to be the only one where you'll be losing that small portion um, of your transaction. But that's, I think, as, as bare bones as you could go. Yeah. Uh, we have another question from Brian. Why Zoom rather than, uh, for example, FaceTime for one-on-one? -on -one? I don't have any. Well, I have a, my sister gave me an iPad about three weeks ago. So, but... Prior to that, I had no Apple product, so so uh, FaceTime isn't an option for me. Um, FaceTime, so this is me showing my ignorance. FaceTime is Apple products only, is that right? Okay, so for me, I'll answer that question. Zoom would be an obvious choice because we use Zoom for uh, all the internal meetings at Precision Nutrition. I use it with my clients. It's just an easy choice. It's a tool I use already. But FaceTime would absolutely be an option, I think. The one thing that the one thing that is an alternative that's kind of the bridge is Facebook Messenger. You can do video video calls inside yeah. Facebook Messenger. So that's the bridge that that you know that I've relied on for people that have Apple products. Okay, so once again, it's something you already probably have. Like if you're using Facebook Messenger, there is a video tool built in there. Uh, so, all right. Well, thank you guys for your time. Are there any questions, um, anyone here watching us live still that have popped up uh, for you? Maybe throw them our way in the next few seconds. Any takeaways or any last maybe points here before we go off the air that you guys want to share. 
Uh, I, I do. I just want to kind of encourage people to, I mean, this is what's happening. It's a reality. And this is where we're kind of all going, uh, whether we like it or not. And so just taking action and doing something um, and using the tools that are available, um, keeping it very simple is, is really the best option. And if we don't know how long this is going to be. And so a week or two in, you may start feeling really comfortable and you want to expand. And so you always can do that. But I, I think starting off with very simple things like chaos and I have kind of talked about, and we've talked about Kate um, are just the best option for just let's get going today and let's start doing something today. So I just want to kind of want to encourage people to uh, just start, just get going. Uh, there's always that fear when we're doing something new. Um, and we always talk about just take action. You, we tell our clients that. And so we need to make sure that we're doing it as well. Um, just take the action and start going. And it's not going to be perfect. And that's okay. Yep. Good to say anything better. Uh, KS, I have one last question for you. And then uh, maybe you could share your parting words of advice today. So the question I have, it's actually not for me. It's from uh, Desiree, uh, who wants to know, if you had any thoughts for older population who doesn't use Facebook, doesn't have any equipment and can't get on the floor. You know, that's the special population that is not necessarily suitable for, for online coaching. Right. So like, that's a, that's a great question because you know, that's something that, that, that people that serve that population is going to have to solve. Like, can you actually help them without, touching them, right? Because that's the population that's, that's at risk. So if you know, my, my philosophy, because of the population that I work with, you know, you know, I, I have a philosophy of, I, I, uh, you know, I regress until I find success, right? So like, I don't do, I don't deal with it with advanced athletes. I don't deal with, you know, people that are into bodybuilding and all the stuff I deal with, you know, with desk workers, right? So with that population, you know, I have to regress until I find success. So if I have to regress a squat all the way down to sitting down and standing up in a chair, that's what I have to do to, for, until, to, to, to have that person get exercise. And so with that, you know, with, the, with an older population, you may have to do the same thing. It may be something as simple as sitting on the couch and standing back up, right? That's how you do a squat. And if they have a wall, do wall push-ups, right? So the, the programming may have to be very simple. It's, you know, the, the things that I can normally do in the gym with barbells and machines, like I don't have access to that. So now I have to simplify, regress until I find success and help people from there. Thank you. Well, that, that sounds like a great point on which to, to wrap up. I really appreciate you two being here and I think I'm, I'm not alone. So if, uh, if you're watching this now live or later and uh, you think this is helpful, please let us know in the comments and we will see you tomorrow at, uh, I, I really like tuned into radio voice. Did you hear that? It's just like <laughs> yeah, I caught that. <laughs> we, we will be tuning in tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Hope we will see you there. Uh, thanks, you too. Gotta have like a catchphrase. To, like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way the cookie crumbles. There, there you go. <laughs> Hey, I've stopped the live stream and stopped.